What is a production designer? Oh. <laughs> um, production designer is the person that's in charge of the look of the film. Um, anything that you see on the screen is uh, anything you see on screen that's not an actor, I have control over, basically. So, um, you know, when we're at a location, I'm involved in picking the location. Uh, if there's, you know, anything that's, that we allow to stay at a location is a decision on our part. We build the sets, uh, design and build the sets, all the signage. Um, but the most important thing that a production designer does is um, I'll start out with the script. Everything, everything is based on the script. Um, we, you know, I'll go through the script. I'll figure out what the main themes of the story are and how those themes can relate visually. So the, there's visual elements, color palette, textures, style, angles, um, various things that will help tell the story without words. So, um, so that the world that the characters are m moving around in also informs the story that we're trying to tell. Okay. Um, now this story has two very sort of distinct worlds. Yes. How would you characterize them? All right. The story of Bailout is um, it's the story of Jim Baxford, who um, you know he's a common man. He lives in the real world, and then there is quite divorced from the real world. There's the financial world, where you know they don't work by the same rules that the real world works in. They don't work in the same economy that the real world works in. They play with money on a level that the rest of us never never see. They they make money without producing anything. They um, siphon off you know profits uh, of real businesses that are really creating stuff. And and then um, all right, backtrack a little. But um, so in this film. We're trying to emphasize the distinction between the real world, where you know money buys products, money um, is used to manufacture things, money is a tangible element, and the financial world, where money is is figures on a on a computer screen, it's noughts and zeros flying through the air, money money moves around, money disappears, money is created. Is a di you know that's the difference between the financial world and the real world. So in our film, the real world is characterized by um, rougher textures, warmer colors, um, yellows, browns, um, fabrics, and um, tangible tangible material. Whereas in the financial world, where we're focusing more on the idea of insubstantiality, of glass, of slick metal, cooler colors, computer screens, digital world, um, elements that, that can't be grasped, can't be touched. And, um, and so it's a, it's a simple dichotomy between the two. You go from you know, a warm yellow brown textural world to a slick, cool, blue, glassy, uh, ephemeral, um, insubstantial world of numbers and figures and digital stuff. So um, in each of our sets, we've, you know, we're, we're in Jim's house. It's all, go, you know, it's all warm, you know, warm colors. Again, the sort of yellow, nicotine, um, cool, like. Um, fabric, toothy textures, all the windows are curtained, we don't see glass so much in, um, in Jim's world, in the real world, so in his house all of the windows were, were curtained, we don't see the panes of glass, um, he, works, you know, he works with paper, he likes something in his hand, something that's, that's tangible that he can grasp hold of, so when he's going through his um, finances and everything, it's always with, with pieces of paper and, and pads and adding things up and, and things like that. When you get into the financial world, so the banks where he's going and checking up on his mortgage or the um, lawyer's office where he's told that he's lost all his money or even meeting with his broker for coffee, 
We bring in we bring in glass, we bring in metal, we pick locations that emphasize these sorts of things. And um, and then when we get into the trading floor and the you know into the offices of the financial people, it's computer screens. There's there's less in the world of, of paper. You know, when we see paper it's it's paper in a shredding machine. It's uh, they don't keep hard copy of stuff. It's all this sort of digital floating around in the ether stuff. We play a lot of glass, that kind of um, slippery liquid, um, and it's also, you know, it also uh, is a metaphor of the, the glass wall, the glass ceiling, the glass, you know, that separates us from them. Um, we, so, now oh, I'm losing my train of thought now. <laughs> no, no, it's good. Um... Go on with another question. That's, uh... <laughs> no, it's, it's all very fascinating. Um... Sort of stuff. Now, in terms of your actual process, I yep. mean, um, what what are some of the first steps you do when you're reading a script? Is there a sort of a second script you write, or um, no? I do. You know, I'll break the script down, and there's a process that I personally go through where I like to sort of break a script down, just in the fundamentals at the beginning. Start to figure out. All right, so you know, in this scene, we're going to need X, Y, and Z. We're going to you know. Dude sitting down at his desk, we're going to need some paperwork. Dude sitting down at his couch, what sort of a couch will it be? Um, I go through this little process of the, of, the, of the smaller elements that are essential, and then you know, I'll read the script three or four times off the bat, and then I'll start trying to pick what the main themes are. And, um, and then when I start to see that, then I'll do a lot of research. I, Research Wall Street firms. Research, um, you know, armored cars. Research New York suburbs. Things like that. Start to see what sort of natural visual distinctions there are between, you know, the different elements of the script, and um, and then from that, that will then inform how we're going to visually distinguish between the two different elements of the script or the two sort of different worlds that we, you know, in this particular script that we have. Um, the process is generally the same from script to script to script. But, um, and it all, you know, it always starts from the script. Um, I then, yeah, go through, break it down, um, and then start to figure how we're going to tweak reality. You know, I don't like to impose something over the top, particularly with, you know, a film like this where we're doing a lot of location work. Um, you don't, you know, you don't want to go and alter locations unnecessarily, but you just want to pick locations that, that inform the script and, and tell the story that you want to tell uh, visually. Mm. If we're building sets, then we have a lot more latitude to completely control the, you know, everything that we do. And um, you know, in, in a you know, in a in a film like that where we're building, then yeah, we we go all the way. We're picking textures and colors and, and whatnot, and all the furniture and everything like that is is picked to inform the character, inform the story that they're in, inform the story that we're telling, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, when you watch a movie, yeah, what? jumps out at you when the uh, production design has been really successful? Um, when production design has been really successful, it's because, particularly if you're, you know, if you're in a modern day scenario, it's because things don't jump out at you. It's, it's, you know, I don't want anything that I do to jump out. If something jumps out, then, then the spectator is no longer watching the film, they're all of a sudden watching what's around. Mm. Um, having said that, you know, um, one film that was influential for me when, when I was prepping for this was, uh, there was a film called The International, um, which was again about uh, banking sector and international banks, etc. And they played glass a lot through that film. Every single scene was was played against glass, within glass, and then and then at the end in this finale in the Guggenheim, they actually, you know, um, Clive Owen shoots down this huge glass sculpture at the top, which drops down and kills some guys. That was 
that was beautifully designed in my in my mind. Mm. Um, they, you know, they um, they picked an element and they went with it. And you can you, you can go quite strongly with a with a visual metaphor because you know, provided it's it's uh, rooted in the real world, then um, it takes quite a lot for the audience to all of a sudden be jolted out. Um, other good films would be like um, there's a film several years ago called K Pax, yeah. and in that it's you know some guy that's coming theoretically coming from another planet or something or other, and he travels at the speed of light, etc., etc. It was all uh, you know set in uh, modern time, modern locations. It's all very contemporary. But what they did is they just played with elements that refracted light, and and they played with light throughout that whole film, with you know the blinds that get shuttered down in the um, psychiatrist's office to little prisms of glass that refracted light around the place, and they just took that that element from the script, the idea of light, the idea that this guy has travelled by light, and played with it throughout the film, and and I found that was beautiful. Um, down to you know, other great films would be like um, um, Stranger Than Fiction with um, Will Ferrell and um, right, right. What's a Face and What's a Face. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's a, that was a um, very simply made film, but they picked perfect locations for everything, and, and they had fun with picking locations as well. Like you know the. Um, the loft where the writer lives is just this pristinely white, uh, empty space because you know she's this writer. She works with a blank page, and so her space is just—it's empty. It's white. It is like a blank piece of paper. Um, Will Ferrell's apartment was was browns and ochres. It's like it, it just exudes the kind of. Um, mundane reality of his existence and, and the, the lack of personality that he has whereas when you get to um, Maggie Gyllenhaal's apartment it's, um, it's beautifully textural and it's got colour in it etc etc and her bakery has beautiful colour in it blah, blah, blah. Um, and then and then they just you know they had fun with their location choices they picked some beautiful location choices and they made um, really quite a um, you know, a visually striking film, purely in locations. There was, um, you know, Will Ferrell's apartment was built, but there was very little building in that film. Anyway, we digress. We've gotten off bailout, right. which is, you know, the main thing that we're trying to talk about here. Right. So, um, so what for to sum up everything up? Yeah. What is the you know the number one thing that you want to see on the screen? And when you see the final film, how will you know you've been successful? Other than that you don't notice anything or yeah. that sort of thing. What I what I really try and create is that, um, or what you know, I try and go for when I'm designing a film, is that you can pick any particular location, any particular scene, and that you'll know that you're in this film. So there's a a visual um, palette, a um, that runs through the whole film that ties everything together, so that you're not just dancing from here to there to there. Um, you know, unless, of course, the script required that kind of, of um, you know, sharp transitions from place to place, but that there's a cohesive wholeness to the design and um, that everything then informs the story. Um, you know, we're all, we're all storytellers making films. We're all trying to tell a story. We're trying to... You know, and we're all trying to tell the same story when it's good. And um, you know, from the DP to the director to the production designer, we're all working in the same direction, trying to tell the same story. I'm doing it with colours and textures and and uh, you know, furniture and stuff like that. The DP's doing it with light and camera angles and focal lengths, and the director's doing it with the actors and everything else. You know. Um, we're all just trying to tell a story, and that's kind of it. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Does that work? Yep. All right.